The Shardening. A retail wow tale. All right, guys, are we ready for this? I know some of you guys have been waiting since yesterday. And I've been waiting since yesterday as well. Apparently, this is a pretty darn good episode. Episode four. Herb Vendor. Let's go. Guys, you know Herb Vendor is good. I was, I was on a walk with my wife telling her about Herb Vendor. She's like, what is going on? I'm like, it's, it's an RP guy in, in the video game. And, he, and he, he, he's not really an herb vendor, but like his name is an herb vendor and he trades people weed. And like, there's a, there's a giant sacred pipe and like, yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at the next episode. man. <laughs> Last time on Herb Vendor. She pretended to care. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, there's the pipe I was talking about. So there I was, on my way to Iron so Forge one night when I reluctantly had to share my way of passage with another individual. Rock Nibbler was a cool dude, I'm sure, but I look at the Deep Run Tram as WoW's version of an Uber, and I don't want to share one of the- Wait, was that Shovak? Hold on. It's a cool dude, I'm sure, but I look at the Deep- Meet your driver Shovak at the tram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Deep Run Tram is WoW's version of an Uber, and I don't want to share one of those with anyone. Rock Nibbler had an interesting agenda, even for an RP server such as this one. Players like Rock Nibbler here are the real bread and butter of Moonguard. Sure, there are a ton of serious role players who commit to the craft, or fuck each other, but it's the fringe outliers hey, who I enjoy meeting right. in the wild. And it just so happened that I had caught him during his nibbling crack nuggets off the tram floorboard time. Love that for him. When we finally got to Ironforge, we parted wow. ways, and I continued on my journey. I had one goal. I was a man on a mission. A quest for drip. The one transmog piece I had been trying to get for, I don't know, months now, was Snarry one drop from within the good old Molten Core. Really? Easily solo at that point, but like a mental punch to the scrotum after hundreds of failed attempts. That particular night was different, though. I had both consumed tacos and found a $5 bill in the gas station parking lot oh, earlier in the day. Oh, it's a good day, then. Both of those things combined could only be a prophetic yeah, intimation it's ultimately a good day. bringing it's to a good day. me those fucking shoulders. I just had a feeling this was the night. Well, it wasn't, Bindings. and those tacos gave me the shits. Honestly, it was whatever. He doesn't even mention the bindings, bro. I guess he's a druid anyway. Congrats on the bindings, dude. It's going to hang out with Weedle for the rest of the night, and that was always cool. We'd actually been becoming buddies, and it was really cool to have someone to hang out with both on WoW and on Discord. At this point, he'd taken me and my guild on quite a few RP adventures, each one better than the one before. That was until the one holiday that I knew Weed Elf would be excited about started to approach. War 20. For those of you that don't know, April 20th, or 420, okay. is a commonly celebrated weed holiday. Okay. A lot of states here in America where it's legalized have celebratory gatherings where wow. denizens of said holy plant prepare song and victuals to honor thine plant, which they so idolize. So I figured, why should okay. WoW be any different on this most sacred of days? I set to work planning the event. Being that, like, way over half of my guild were stoners at that point in time, <laughs> okay. they were down. I figured I'd consult with my mutual friend, Buddy Beatdown, as well. Do you remember Buddy from the last video? The Colteron guild leader of this one really cool guild we've been hanging out with for a while. He was down as well. That left me with deciding on the location for the event, something I was pretty excited about. I may not know shit about WoW's lore, and I can't duel my way out of paper bag, but one thing I do know is the map. I knew that the best possible location would be somewhere accessible to everyone, so I kind of narrowed it down between Booty Bay, the Pleasure Palace place outside of Orgamar, and the bar under the tram in Stormwind. The Pleasure All Palace three locations work. had their incontestable differences. Yeah, yeah. The Pleasure Palace had a cool building, with furniture in it. The Deep Run Bar serves alcohol, and Booty Bay kind of has the word ass in it. One of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make, <laughs> but ultimately, I decided on the Deep Run Tram Bar. Palace. No! Any horde partaking in the festivities would be on their own getting into the event. I didn't know how many opposing okay, faction okay. friends would even be in attendance in the first place. But I did know of one person who would be there for sure. Cabin the Rogue. One of the two Volpair players who I actually have respect for. Cabin is a good dude. We met through him relentlessly stream sniping me and ganking me whenever I'd forget I had war mode on. <laughs> Silly me. The stage was set. The venue was booked. Okay. I had notified the masses. And now there was only one more thing to do. Get Weed Elf involved. I had a feeling Weed Elf would be down to throw a 420 party. And he I think I already covered this earlier in the video. But either way, he was happy that I had a little something something up my sleeve for the event. Now all I had to do was wait. I had been as patient as I could. And now the night was finally upon us. I stocked up on weed and white smoke flares and made my way towards the party. As I walked down Wait, the stairs... are there actually 9G per... I guess 9... Okay, that's not too much in a retail. ...early in the video. But either way, he was happy okay, that I had been fine. as patient as I could, and now the night was finally upon us. 
I stocked up on weed and white smoke flares and made my way towards the party. As I walked down the stairs, I don't think I could have prepared myself for the amount of people that were actually Holy there. Crap. Both my guild and Buddy's Beatdowns guild were there in full attendance. There were even a bunch of random- Is this all word of mouth? Or is there like, I wonder if he posted in like a Discord, like the Realm Discord or like a, like a bulletin board or like, or is this all just word of mouth? Like, yo, there's gonna be a 420 party show up. Like that's crazy, Some people man. too. There was even a drawing to enter with winnable prizes. Nice. I figured my best bet to win was to purchase 10 tickets. I was so caught up with the idea of winning that I didn't realize an actual line had even formed. Oh my god, there is literally a line. Holy shit. You didn't get a ticket, Herb. I am planning on buying 10. There's just covering all bases everywhere. Here. 10 of them. I've got something for the road, Herb. Throat killer. Oh okay. shit. Throat killer combined with the lung booster bonus instant death. <laughs> okay. And fun. Unfortunately, when I made it to the end, I also hadn't realized my mass ticket purchase was going to cost me 4k gold. Four? Even more unfortunate to me, I've lost. I guess it didn't really matter. Wait, so basically the person doing the raffle has a bunch of letters and in the letter it's like you lose, you lose, you lose and one of them says you win and he scrambles it in his inventory so he doesn't even know and then he just trades it to people? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's, I didn't even, I've never thought of that. That's such a good way to do it, man. Because afterwards we all grouped up in the hallway to go meet Weed Elf. We made our way through the city, amassing even more members in Darkshire, ultimately ending up at the boat at Booty Bay. That's when someone invited me to a random duel, Resin Elf. I didn't know who it could be, but I had assumed it was Weed Elf. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh, he's level 60. He was pretty low on HP at this point, so I just hit him with my staff. <laughs> There's so many people, dude. What? Okay, Ant. And he's gone, just like well, that. Well, we win. That was cool. When our boat made port in Ratchet, we were excited to meet the man himself. Weed Elf! Weed Elf. Dude. <laughs> uh, he's gonna take everyone to the sacred pipe. Okay. We followed him through the desert. Kind of a fail roll there, but it's okay. And across yeah. mountains. It's all good. Ultimately leading Damn. us to a pipe that we all ripped the fuck out of. With the 420 festivities coming to a close, I logged out for the evening and decided I'd take a break from WoW for a few days. When I logged back into the game, I was met with a not so pleasant surprise. A few days? Wait, hold on. How normal is this? Is Are, are you guys the type of gamers that you play WoW and then you'll log off for a couple of days and then play again and then log off for a couple of days? Type 1 if that's you. Type 2 if you're on pretty much every day. Two, two, two. Okay. Like I've, I've, I've pretty much always been the WoW player since two thousand and four. To now, pretty much playing every day. Just recently, I've been, I've been taking the weekends off, like the last year or two, uh, since uh, my son's been born and stuff like that. I've been trying to IRL more, but like the last, basically the last twenty years, I've played like every day. I, I it's just, it did WoW has just had me in a chokehold. Like I've been playing pretty much every single day. I couldn't imagine just like, oh, I'm just gonna take a few days off, you know? Crazy. During my time away, Blizzard had launched something. The Welcome to Sanctuary event was now live to celebrate the release of Diablo 4. That's right. We as WoW players finally had the chance to get ourselves a red goat. 
or Hi. Diablo Jesus' horse. That's actually a cool mount. Basically, a monster called a treasure goblin would appear every 30 minutes in either Stormwind or Orgamar. Everyone interested in participating or possibly obtaining the event-specific loot simply had to aid in the killing of the spawned treasure goblin. Oh, that's cool. How the event worked was cool on paper, I'm sure, but the yeah. execution was rough. You see, capital cities these goblins were spawning in were already full of people. On top of that, nearly every one of those people would be helping battle the treasure goblin. This amalgamation of spellcasting particle effects and sheer mass amount of players in one area combined added up to one problem. Lag. I don't have the best PC in the world or anything like that, Starforge but it definitely PCs, isn't man. bottom of the barrel. I was getting a solid 5 FPS during any and all encounters I had with five? those damn goblins. At the end of the day, this was a pretty baseless complaint to be pissed off about. I mean, how many of us actually spent time doing anything in the capital cities on WoW anyway? Sure, we'd all tab there, wait for raids to form, PvP queues to pop. I feel like Moonguard, it's a big deal to RP in the capital cities all day long. I'm sure that people were pissed. Whatever. All of that's good and well. But not here on my server. Yeah, exactly. Moonguard is a massively populated roleplay server on WoW. Possibly the most populated. And while sure, RP happens out in the world, but a majority of it is confined to, you guessed it, those two capital cities that the treasure goblin shit was happening in. There were two issues with this. One, the lag from the event made it nearly impossible to do anything within the city walls. Two, phasing. For those of you who don't know what phasing is, let me quote oh. this article from Wowpedia. Phasing is a game design tool that changes outdoor areas of World of Warcraft based on an individual player's accomplishments or quest progress. I hate phasing, dude. Like, I don't like it. The old game never had it. I don't like it. I've talked about this before. To me, if you're in one spot in the game on the same server as someone else in that same spot, then you should be able to see them. You know what I'm saying? So basically, it's a system set up to keep the world dynamic and changing based on each individual player's progress within the world or quest that they're specifically on. Phasing isn't bad, and I completely understand its place in online games, but there's another type of phasing. Sharding. Sharding is a little different, and sharding has nothing to do with our individual players. At the end of the day, sharding is a game design tool created to prevent player overcrowding in outdoor areas of World of Warcraft, and improve server performance. When too many players are in one area, the game automatically creates a new shard, or a copy of that area. Players entering that area from that point on will be placed in the new shard. All in all, that sounds just like less lag to me. Great, right? Problem is that Blizzard had stated numerous times that sharding would never be a feature on roleplay servers. Yeah. Between smaller groups of players partying up to do the event and the sharding thing going on, Stormwind was empty. No. This was something I was not used to, and apparently no one else was either because people. Guys, that's why I think sharding is terrible for WoW. You can't go into a city and have it empty because if I I'm not saying if the city is actually empty. I'm saying the perception of the city being empty makes the game feel dead. Even if it's not actually empty. If Even if there's 10 million people subscribed to WoW, but when you enter a city and it's empty, as a player, that's such a bad feeling. That's why I'm super anti-sharding. Now, I get that it helps with lag and server capacity and modern technological improvements and, you know, this and that, but I don't think it has a place on an MMO. Having said that, I think the middle ground is this. Allow sharding for the first week of new expansions just to allow the expansion to release nicely because that's where like most people play. Maybe even the first two weeks, sure. Okay, first two weeks of a new expansion, there's so many people, doesn't matter. Let's just get everyone online. Let's get everyone playing. Let's get everything smoothed out and then disable it again until the next expansion, right? Like I just, I, I can't get behind that system. I know the, I know the pros. But like the, the cons are just too big, I think. People were pretty upset on the WoW forums. Those who did not complain, however, took it upon themselves to adapt and overcome. My buddy had tipped me off to the fact that a few people had started to hang out in Darkshire. I figured I might as well make my way over and see what all the fuss was about. Darkshire high? A few people was quite an understatement. Darkshire had quickly become the new RP hub on Moonguard. Oh, cool. Frustrating <laughs> that we weren't in the massive city of Stormwind, sure. But honestly, a change of pace that was kind of nice. I think during the Diablo 4 event, a lot of us who were into RP really were up in arms about the whole situation. But personally, looking back now, as I'm editing through the VODs, it was a really nice little break for all of us to get out of our comfort zones and experience role-playing in an environment that we usually wouldn't. The crowd even seemed a little less serious, which was also a cool change. It's like everyone was letting their hair down and just hanging out. Even Horde players were there. One of them even approached me. Crazy Bob. Waves at me. How crazy are you? Can you display it physically? Them talking, once again, 
are they using the potion or is it just an add-on that allows the cross server talk the potion is it, so it's just the potion okay i just killed a man oh shit i think i didn't see it can you do another crazy action please sure dang holy shit crazy bob i have a quest for you do you accept yes i do my lord all right over this way there is an evil man he must be quelled please walk with me that was him <laughs> oh shit he's dead all right okay Wow. You're lighting them all up. Bob is a chat. Your power is both immense and fascinating. Would you like to learn the ways of the hunter? I would love to. That would be hella honorable of you. <laughs> First, you must stalk the prey. <laughs> then you must drink it piss. I was intrigued in learning the art of the hunter, but was a little reluctant about the idea of drinking something's piss. What? Crazy Bob got lost in the crowd and dissipated. Wait, can any hunters in the chat confirm that that's the way the hunter? I've never really played a hunter. I, I don't know. I can't I can't disprove this. Yes, 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 yes. Confirm true. Okay. It all makes sense now. Okay. Did in a wide scale fight to the death. Darkshire ended up being a pretty cool place to spend a few weeks. I think everyone is glad that there was sort of a mutual area most of us players had subconsciously agreed on RPing at. Different than what we were used to, yeah. But the worst thing in the world, definitely not. All right. Next. So they 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 got around sharding by just moving areas. I mean, hey, that's pretty smart. That's pretty like if it was me, I would be whining and complaining on the forums, and uh, yeah. So time on Earth yeah, Vendor. That's good. Whoa, whoa. Wait out. Whoa, someone's in jail. Very, very good episode. Oh man. Herb Fender. Not disappointing. Watch more. More, more, more. Chat wants more. What's how long is the next one? Guys, here's the thing. It's almost noon.